The best part of the slave's life slips through his fingers, but he continues because he has always obeyed. Obedience has become second nature to him. He obeys not knowing why, simply that he must. Obey, produce, and consume. Behold the triptych that rules his life. He obeys his parents, his teachers, and his masters, the landlords and the merchants. He obeys the forces of law and order. He obeys all powers because he does not know any better. There is nothing that frightens him more than disobedience because it signifies risk, adventure, change. Just as a child panics when he loses sight of his parents, the modern slave feels lost without the power system that has created him. His obedience, therefore, continues. Fear has made us slaves, and it keeps us in that condition. We bow before the masters of the world. We accept this life of humiliations and misery strictly out of fear. Nevertheless, we count on greater numbers as compared to the ruling class. Their strength does not come from the police, it comes from our consent. We justify our cowardice to the forces that oppress us with a discourse full of moralizing humanism. Despite his bonds, the modern slave is convinced of his citizenship. The illusion of choice and free determination is fueled by the ability to vote and freely elect those who will conduct his affairs. When it comes down to deciding the society we want to live in, is there really any fundamental difference between the social democrats and the populist right in France? between Democrats and Republicans in the United States, between Labour and Conservatives in the United Kingdom, there is no opposition, because the main political parties agree on one essential thing, the conservation of the present mercantile society. None of the political parties that enter into power question the commodities dogma. And those political parties, with media complicity, monopolize the airwaves. They squabble about trite matters ensuring the status quo. They fight over who will hold the seats that the mercantile parliamentary offers. Those petty disputes are disseminated by the media as a distraction from the critical debate about the election of the society we want to live in. Appearance and triviality eclipse the confrontation of ideas. None of this resembles, not even from afar, a democracy. Real democracy is defined firstly by the mass participation of citizens in the governance of community affairs. It is direct and participative. The popular assembly and the permanent dialogue about the organization of a common life are democracy's most authentic expressions. Representative and parliamentarian forms of government usurp the name of democracy, limiting the power of citizens to the simple act of voting, that is, to nothing. Deciding between light gray and dark gray is not a real election. Parliamentarian seats are mainly occupied by the dominant economic class, be it the right or the pseudo-leftist social democrats. Power is not to be conquered, it is to be destroyed. It is tyrannical by nature, whether exercised by a king, a dictator, or an elected president. The only difference with a parliamentarian democracy is that the modern slave has the illusion of choosing the master he will obey. The vote has made him an accomplice to the tyranny that oppresses him. He is not a slave because masters exist. Masters exist because he elects to remain a slave.
The dominant system is defined thus by the omnipresence of its mercantile ideology. It occupies every space and every sector of life. It calls us to produce, sell, consume, and accumulate. The dominant system has reduced all human interaction to dry mercantile relationships and considers our planet a mere commodity. Our duty is to be servile. The only recognized right is the right to private property. The only god it worships is money. The right to appear is monopolized by those in power. The stage is reserved for the men and speeches that uphold the dominant ideology. Critical thinking is drowned out in a sea of media that determine what is right and what is wrong, what can and cannot be seen. The omnipresence of ideology, the worship of money, the media's bias, the absence of democratic pluralism, the lack of a visible opposition, the will to transform mankind and all the world in its image, and repression in all its forms. Behold, the true face of modern totalitarianism. The majority calls it liberal democracy, it is time to call it what it truly is, a totalitarian mercantile system. Mankind, society, and the entire planet serve this ideology. The totalitarian mercantile system has achieved what no other totalitarian system could, hegemony over the world through its ideology. Today, Exile is impossible. Some of those that work forces are the same that bar crosses. 
some of those that work forces Draw the same that bar crosses Yeah. 